Hey, g'day everybody. I'm back down in the deep trench once again. Uh, sitting in this wonderful blue glow. And I'm going to do a little bit of a more testing of the deep sea environment. Mainly because uh, in my last episode of um, testing out the dolphins, I ran across some interesting problems with the temperature down here. And they didn't really stack up very nicely. And as I got some comments, I was using fur armor, which apparently was a really, really big mistake. Um, and the wiki itself actually says that fur armor provides zero temperature protection when it's wet. Uh, whether that it's actually zero or it's something else, um, because the wiki may be out of date, who knows. But if it does provide zero protection, it was a stupid thing for me to use. But at the same time, there were some inconsistencies with the, the dolphin. And uh, really what I want to do is just test to see what is the uh, insulation requirement when you're in the deep sea trench. Uh, the first thing to probably note is I've got the equilibrium buff, and I was testing this a little bit earlier on um, by basically removing my equilibrium buff and it does take your insulation down to zero and at the moment I've got 48 and it's a little bit of an odd number because when you divide 48 by 30 it ends up being like 1.6 or something along those lines um, and when I allocated the points individually when I had no equilibrium buff up to 30 uh, you allocate you get two points of fortitude per um, level and that two points will initially give you three insulation. The second point will also give you three insulation, but then the third level that you put into it, which will be six fortitude, gives you four insulation. So it goes three, three, four. Um, and yeah, that's a little bit of an odd thing, but there's obviously to account for the rounding errors that go along with that. But it's safe to say that's where the, the 48 is actually coming about. So I'm down here currently, and I think I'm in the, the dead of night. So we're at minus 30 degrees Celsius. I've got no buffs, I've got no skills. I'm completely empty on everything. I haven't allocated a single thing. I'm gonna reset everything back to scratch. And I wanna see at what point does it actually work. And so I guess really what I wanna do now is just pump fortitude in. I should remain freezing at this point, even with all my levels going into fortitude. Okay, so we've got, yeah, we're still freezing. It's down the bottom right corner. I've got the hypothermia. Uh, if I didn't have the infinite stats on, I would basically be dead. Uh, not to mention the fact that I wouldn't be able to breathe. Um, so now, really what I want to do is I want to start spawning in some gear to see if I can account for that. If we have a look at the stats now, I've got 220, sorry, 244 hypothermal insulation. My previous little bit of a testing, which when I had some of the skills, was around minus 24 under the water. Needs about 500 insulation, but with also the skills. So we've got to boost up that hypothermal insulation above 500 and see what we can do about it. Okay, so it looks like the, the day is starting to change. Um, I've spawned in a number of sets of gear. Uh, a standard a mid-range set and some mythical stuff so I can mix and match. Um, with the mythical stuff that I'm wearing, uh, it's not the crazy mythical stuff that I did in my previous stuff, but it has boosted my hypothermal insulation over 500. Uh, the temperature is starting to rise at the moment because day is starting to come along. So we're still close to minus 30 and we haven't successfully hit the point where we can actually survive under the water. And so really at this point I've got to try and find that point. I would have liked to have found it at minus 30, but we may end up just watching this temperature and see what we can actually work out along the way. I guess the other thing to do is I've only got 15% on my fortitude. So if we bump it up to the full 45%, oh, there we go, we're actually surviving now at minus 28. I'm just regular cold. My fortitude is 500, and sorry, my hypothermal insulation is 589. Just take an item off. 546, and I'm freezing again. All right. Freezing, freezing, freezing. 589, so I've added about 40 points. So somewhere between 540 and 590 is the magic number at well, minus 28, minus 27. So I've got to get back to the minus 30 to see what that range was. But in the meantime, I'll wait and see what the best temperature I get to is, and we'll see what the insulation requirement is for that temperature as well. Okay, we're not probably at the lowest temperature, I'm sorry, the highest temperature it's actually going to get. 
Uh, minus 15 is probably a good stable point though. I know it gets lower than that. You can get down to about minus 11 I think is the best I've seen. But 15 is probably a good point to go to. Now at the moment I'm actually in perfectly comfortable temperature. Um, oh, it immediately went cold but that's fine. We'll get all this gear off and have a look. So I have hypothermia at 15 degrees. 354 is the insulation. So we're not quite surviving there. Let's just bump that up and see what the numbers actually manage to give us. Now I need a, probably a few of these. Oh, no, we've already got that. There's one item was able to give us cold. So 400 insulation at 15 degrees. So if you can manage to achieve 400 hypothermal insulation, you can survive at the minus 15 degrees underwater. And so that's, um, that's fairly significant. I mean, I've got 150 fortitude, uh, we've got the plus 45% for deep sea um, skill and one piece of hide armor which happens to be particularly good. Uh, if we take that off as I said like it's 354 is my base there and one item is basically boosting it over. But let's have a look if we just use standard hide what can we actually achieve with that? Okay we can get the 400 with standard hide. So. If you had 150 fortitude, the skill for deep sea diving and standard height, you can actually survive down here. That is possible. Um, there's another way you can do some blending here though, because obviously there's the grog, the food buffs that you have available to you. Uh, the seagull unfortunately is not really a viable option because it, uh, it dies due to lack of breath. But still using grog and a few of the other things would actually be beneficial. And so it could give you that buff that will allow you to survive without having to worry about 150 fortitude. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Oh nice, that's actually a very very good, good test. So at a minimum you want 400 hypothermal insulation to go down into the trench. Whether that be through food buffs, through fortitude buffs, or through armor buffs, that seems to be about the minimum that you want, and that's for coming down during the daytime. So now I'll push it through and get it back to the minus 30, and we'll see if we can find what the minimum is. Okay, we're at the full minus 30 that is actually possible to do. Uh, so let us take all this armor off, chuck on the good stuff, and see whether or not I can survive the worst that it is with what I have? And the answer is no. And my fortitude's gone up because of the, the bonus fortitude on the armor and it's still not good enough. All right. Still minus 30. Whoa. Interesting. Our temperature is minus 30, yeah. And interesting. That's like, that's nearly 900 fortitude. Sorry, insulation. Ooh, interesting. Let's put on the worst one. That one. Looks like the number might be about 800. Oh, did I put on a really good one again? 83 Put that one on. 800 and it went straight to no to none which is interesting uh, 740 extra cold put that one on again Cold, 690. Okay, so it's getting close to 700 and it basically gives you cold. 662, it's cold, that means the temperature's risen. So at minus 29, the, the, the jump between minus 30 and minus 29 is significant. You know, we're basically talking 100 points, if not more. Yeah, that's cold. But yes, we're talking basically 100 points of insulation between minus 30 and minus 29. 
So as soon as that temperature rises up even just a little bit, uh, the the gains are very, very significant. But if you're going down here in the dead of night, where it's minus 30, you are going to need upwards of 700 hypothermal insulation. If you come down here during the daytime, you are going to need, uh, what was it, 400 insulation. All right, so the next test is gonna be an interesting one. Let's find the code. All right, for this next test, it would be good if we had a stable temperature. Uh, 471 hypothermal insulation. We now have 360. All right, so let's just quickly note all that down. 360 versus 471. 360 times by 1.45 equals 522. That does not stack up. Let's just go with bare bones. Our bare bones is 354. Dolphin, jump on you. It is now 244. Right. Yep, so 244 is the baseline hypothermal insulation you get from Fortitude. So what's happened is, when you jump onto this creature, it removes the 45% bonus that you actually have for being in the water. So it's actually treating you while you're riding the dolphin as if you're not actually riding, sorry, as if you're not actually in the water. And so you don't get the temperature bonus from the advanced water temperature. And so I've lost that 45% by jumping onto the dolphin. And that seems to be where that has come from. Anyway, that seems to be the fault of the dolphin. Uh, they've obviously copied the template of the other creatures and haven't taken into account that there's skills that need to actually be applied. Uh, but you know, I actually suspected that was the case. But it's still interesting to see what the numbers actually are. Uh, at the very least, uh, 400 insulation is achievable, even though it's uh, a little bit over the top, given that you still need all the other things along the way to get down here. Uh, and yes, I don't even know what the buff for Grog is. Let's have a look at that now. Can I find Grog? Grog. I consume it. Mm -hmm. Alright, so the ship went straight away. We'll grab the grog. Grog gives us. Gosh, it doesn't really give me a good indication of whatever that's doing. So normally I would have 244 on my hyperthermal insulation. I now have 272. Okay. Gives you a little bit. It's, it's really not very much. Um does the grog buff come up in the green text? Yeah, I know that's really telling me what I want to know. You are drunk. Uh, yeah, it's not really giving me what I want to know. But at any rate, it looks like it's actually not a huge buff to the uh, insulation. Oh, slightly impaired vision, but all right, we're here. 382 hypothermal insulation instead of uh, whatever I had before. <laughs> well, let's just jump on the dolphin. And yeah, 272. It's gone back to the, the baseline. 244 is what I would have without the grog. 272 with the grog. It's only a partial increase. Um, it is... I guess significant in that it was 30. If it's a percentage based multiplier, uh, if you had gear on as well, uh, it would obviously have an impact. It's not a huge impact, but it is something. All right. Well, I think that's really enough testing of temperatures. Uh, it looks like they're going to have to fix the dolphin. Have it apply the underwater temperature buff while you're rolling the dolphin because it's being stripped off. And that's probably the main problem with bringing dolphins down here for a bit of fun. Uh, as far as anything else, uh, the other one is probably going to be the fact that it actually gets to minus 30 under here. But so be it. Alright, well, thanks for watching. I hope you found the numbers interesting. Uh, I just thought I'd try and smash it all out and just see what it was that was going on. Uh, and yeah, 
happy diving catch you in the next one